All right, what is going on, Banter Fam? Welcome in to Tuesday's edition of In the Game. I am your host, Hustle, and as always, we are going to be diving into the crypto gaming markets, as always, and we are going to also take a look at a couple play-to-earn economies that we haven't covered in depth in this show yet. Uh, a couple projects that we've surfaced before, maybe, right? We've talked about them uh, as p- projects that I do have my eye on, uh, but there are some economies out there that are not the peg axes, that are not the Krabatas of the world, right? Uh, so we're I, like I've been covering those games and uh, very established in those economies. But where are the other opportunities? Uh, some of these are higher risk, right? But with higher risk comes high reward. So we'll cover a couple different economies within this video that I think are worth taking a look at for the present and for the future. Uh, we'll also take a look a little bit at the market as well and some news across the space because there is a lot of news. And stick around. I might hint at another giveaway at the end of the show. Uh, so without further ado, let's get in the game. Minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If you ain't here to hustle, why is you here? But if you hit here to hustle, the moon is near. It's crypto bent and not financial advice. If you don't listen, what's the cost? What's the price? This ain't a game, put you on game. I know you don't play, but ain't a sin. If you ain't here to hustle, why is you here? But if you here to hustle, the moon is near. It's crypto bent and not financial advice. If you don't listen, what's the cost? What's the price? This ain't a game, put you on game. I know you don't play, but ain't here to play. If you get lost, show you the way. All right, let's get into it. And the market's looking pretty good. Uh, Bitcoin, I believe, is back up to 44,000 as we're seeing gaming tokens leading the charge on my watch list. And it's no surprise when the market bounces, these gaming tokens do the same. Uh, We see Dafina bouncing nicely, D-Race, Network, Metagods up 20%, and for the week up 20% too, looking strong. Uh, We see Ultra bouncing as well. I know MetaWars came out with some gameplay, which we'll cover in a future episode. Uh, when we have more time to cover different games in depth. Uh, but Meta Wars released some gameplay that looked pretty good. Phaeton Arena up 15%, 15% for Super Farm. So the market's looking solid as far as gaming goes. Uh, and this is the time, right? If you've been DCAing into these projects, I think you know this is where either you finish off topping off your bags or you, know, you just kind of let the rewards start to reap themselves. Because these projects like Ultra and Vulcan Forge, if you've been DCAing into these projects, it's only a matter of time for whenever the market does trend up that these projects do explode. And then in particular, uh, you know, these projects are on the cusp of a blue chip gaming project. Uh, you know, you have the top tier gaming, established gaming projects in the space, multi-billion dollar market caps. But in my opinion, you know, Vulcan Forge and Ultra are on the cusp of being blue chip gaming projects. So keep your eyes out on that. And this is definitely the time where stacking quality has paid off. Now, uh, let's take a look at BlockWorks tweet here with Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, and Tekken video game publishers. So the publisher of all the games behind Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, and Tekken will invest $130 million to build a metaverse. So that would be huge. And imagine the IP capability Uh, Imagine the IP capability uh, that you could bring to a metaverse where you could have a crossover between like a Goku from Dragon Ball Z. You could have characters from Naruto and from Tekken and it's in the same world. Uh, Imagine how cool that could be. That concept by itself is already a hit. Uh, And if you could bring all those cultural icons and so many different figures, right? There's so many people who watched Dragon Ball Z who watched Naruto, et cetera, or who played Tekken. So that market appeal is huge. So that's really big. If they made something that was cross IP, that could be really, really big. And I think that this is just super bullish for the space. You see big publishers like this with big IP capabilities getting involved. It's the same thing as a big gaming studio getting involved, right? So very, very bullish for the space. And one thing I also wanted to take a look at I've been talking over and over about the entertainment capability in the metaverse. And we see from the sandbox here, there's social hub capability in the metaverse, which empowers just that. So imagine, you know, you see your favorite artist is on tour somewhere, but unfortunately you're in K 
California and the artist is touring in the UK. Well, luckily, thanks to the metaverse, you could actually be at the concert, right, at the same time. So look, you can hold concerts here in the social hub for Sandbox, for example, as you see here. You can educate newcomers about your products, organize a fashion show, or host weddings. So it'd be super cool, right? You could, you've never seen one of your favorite artists live before, or you can kind of get a soft experience in the metaverse, right? Uh, you can attend concerts and stuff like that. And Sandbox is empowering players uh, for that, right? And I think that obviously Snoop is leading the way. He has his little plot within Sandbox. And I think obviously, as we see here, as I was just talking about it, it popped up. Uh, but he has this little attraction within the Sandbox. And I think you'll see more of that. So a lot of event planners and stuff like that will start to get together and host concerts and host events within the metaverse. Imagine the first couple that gets married in the metaverse. Uh, that'll, be a, that'll be interesting. That, that'll be interesting because someone will do it. Someone will set the trend and get married in the metaverse. Maybe it's already been done. Who knows? Uh, but host weddings, that'd be super interesting. And just the uh, amount of capabilities that the Sandbox is trying to bring to the table, uh, very solid. And they just keep building. And the capabilities that they seem to keep reaching, uh, as they say, the possibilities are endless. So it looks very, very solid. One thing I wanted to point out, I pointed this out last week. So Sin City is now available for staking. Uh, the Sinner token, you can now stake this. And the rewards are looking pretty solid. If you haven't taken a further look, as of last night on Valentine's Day, uh, the APR was up over 1,000%. Uh, the APY was up over 1,000% 1, at 1,142 on the Sinner governance token. This is the Mafia Metaverse. And in my opinion, a top five game easily for the rest of the year, right? Um, and their game's going to roll out in stages. If you missed the interview with Roy uh, from Sin City a couple months back, you should definitely check that out after the show. We talked all things Sin City, but they're going to roll this game out in stages. Their stage one, stage two, and stage three will come out over the next 10 months. And I think that that's going to be an amazing development for the space. Having games like this, the quality, the investors behind it, this could be one of those games that actually starts to push the agenda forward, along with games like Phantom Galaxies, uh, Big Time, Illuvium. Those actual AAA feeling games from the surface, I think we need those in the space, and they could definitely take this to the next level. And 1,000% staking rewards, pretty nice, I, I got to say. 1,000%, you know, nobody would argue with that. It's sitting at almost about $0.10, cents, $0.9.5 cents with a $1 billion fully, fully diluted market cap. But this is a super quality game, guys. A lot of games are honestly, honestly, much, much less quality and a much higher fully diluted market cap. So just take a look at it. And, uh, you know, I've been bullish on Sin City since before the pre-sale, before the IGO, uh, since it came out. So definitely take a look at that. And the staking rewards there, definitely you should take a look at. Because even though I hinted at it in the past, I feel like uh, people have been maybe sleeping on it. And a thousand percent is definitely something to not go to sleep on, I would say. And then another project we've talked about in the past uh, that yesterday announced their updated Gamepedia feature, Spintop, has now announced that they're going to update gaming guides. Uh, and it's kind of like what we do. It's kind of like what we do with the play to earn guides, the earnings guides within economies. We've done Peg Axie in the past, for example, and we're going to do other economies. But for example, when you look at Defina, Alien Worlds, Gala Games, and Gods Unchained, they've come out with guides on how to get started within these economies, kind of like a step-by-step. -step. So Spintop's Gamepedia already has uh, the feature to review games. You can take a look at the description of games, find all the links, the information, stuff like that. But now they're enabling gaming guides where people are putting together tutorials for each game. Uh, so it goes further than just like an earnings guide. It's more than actually just a step-by-step -step guide on how to get established, how to play the game, which I love. Education in this space is definitely needed. And I think in the gaming space, so many people are just like, I don't game or I, I never was a gamer growing up. I have, I'm so lost. I don't know what to do, yada, yada. So education in this space is definitely needed. And Spintop is trying to tackle that head on and, um, like I said, if you haven't seen their Gamepedia, definitely check it out because you can check out different games, all their different economies. We'll just take a look at Pagaxi, for example, uh, if we can click find out more here, as you see. 
Uh, they have their trailer, the token price on the right side, contract address, description of the game. So all the info you need here on the Gamepedia. Very good feature here and nice to see the gaming guides rolling out uh, because education will play a vital role in the future. Now let's tackle the bulk of today's show. Uh, and I tweeted this out last night and I had a lot of people asking questions. So we're going to kind of take a look across the board here. Play to earn and passive plays. So passive investments, passive economies are the real money makers right now. So if you've noticed, you know, the sentiment here has been positive for a while because, you know, Peg Axie has been performing for months. And we have now these passive economies like Krabata and DeFi Kingdoms. If you're farming in DeFi Kingdoms, stacking up tokens, if you've got these passive economies working for you, like Peg Axie, uh, then you're definitely, market aside, you've been doing really well. Uh, but there's other opportunities that are emerging because, you know, if you look across the board, Axie Infinity's earning wave only lasted, you know, six, seven months before the hype really died down, before SLP really uh, or really just not even SLP, before the economy really cooled off and the, uh, you know, income, the living income people were making became no longer uh, as lucrative, right? So now with all the economies springing up, when you have one working for you like Peg Axie, you maybe need to start looking around the corner, right? What else could you start looking at? With some of your profits, what could you pivot your money towards? Uh, and some of these, I, like I've mentioned, some of these are higher conviction. Some of these are higher risk, right? So some of these will be high risk, high reward. But it's also quick payoff time, very new projects. Uh, and one of them, I actually think, has that appeal of a potential Axie Infinity graphic-wise, right? The graphics really resemble Axie Infinity. Uh, and we'll talk about that here in this video. We won't talk about Peg Axie too much. It was obviously the first one here. So horses, race, or rent. Peg Axie, they have a Peg Axie Insider tomorrow, which I will be listening in on. Definitely want to hear what they have to say, including a new platform called Themis and a new platform called Satellite, plus the mobile game. So really looking forward to the updates on the mobile game. So that's going to be solid. Also, Kerbata, the new factional update. So as I've been mentioning, I don't want to give an earnings guide yet until I actually get to get in here with the new update and see what's the best strategy. So we'll figure out the best strategy. We'll give an earnings guide here for this economy once that does roll out. And I actually have time to test it out. Now that the update's live, we will see what we can do. And I'll give you a nice earnings economy breakdown for Krabata with the new factions. But Krabata's picking up a lot of steam here. And I did want to just point this out. Uh, and I believe this would be tracked on uh, Nansen here. Avalanche transactions by entity stats. Krabata was leading over Trader Joe, Pangolin, and more. So... Uh, the amount of transactions within Krabata definitely, definitely upticking. And when you take a look, number one spot all times transaction next week uh, is what they're gunning for, uh, according to Coop Digital Marketing. So we'll see how that goes. But definitely uh, for the last seven days, they are leading the charge here. Krabata's picking up that steam and they're number 27 in games, number three on the Avalanche chain on DAP Radar. And I love this tweet. This, this this tweet made me laugh out loud. Twitter's just great. Called a loan office and tried to pitch them my business idea regarding Krabata. Told them my initial investment would be $9,000 for three crabs. But within 60 days, they will be paid off. By breeding a crab army, I can mine, I can loot, and I can sell crab eggs. They hung up on me. Yeah, I, I feel that way too when I, when I tell people I'm running a digital horse stable that pays quite a bit of money that, uh, you know, really uh, people are racing them. Scholars are racing them. You just put the investment in when they say, when they hear about my digital horse stables and my, my crab army that are mining in the background for me. Uh, and as you'll hear later in the show, my pizza chefs and unicorns, uh, you know, they, they definitely think I'm either on, on some sort of substances or, or something, but you know, it's all, it's all legit. It's all legit. We are out here in the play to earn world, just absolutely doing our thing. Uh, so let's get into the first project here that I think is really emerging onto the scene and I think is worth taking a look at. And that's crypto unicorns. So crypto unicorns, as they describe themselves, are a digital pet collecting and farming game built on the blockchain. And what I love about this project is the artwork really resembles that of an Axie Infinity, right? So Axie, obviously huge hit. 
everyone always everyone always compares games right to axie infinity but as far as like a looks appeal not even just we're not talking anything else i'm talking to just about the feel and the look of the game and the graphics everything about this lines up in my opinion you discover and collect the epic unicorns as you see different types of unicorns there you can hatch and evolve your unicorns uh, so there will be a breeding functionality and right now you can actually uh put your unicorn for staking and you can earn tokens from that and we'll describe that here in a second but within the game uh beyond just some sort of staking mechanism long term this will be a play to earn game uh, that has multiple legs of the economy here there's going to be racing there's going to be jousting there's going to be battle games and i think this this looks really really solid here's a little bit of a tease of the interface uh, so you're on your land plot here you have your unicorns and then you can kind of navigate through your land plot here so this is the default view zoomed out multiple land plots currently in your wallet right so you can check out all your different plots all your different uh you know assets basically you can see your tokens up here you can see your unicorn uh you can check out your inventory all that good stuff so super cool interface teasers uh, and here's a more zoomed in view of the land and when you take a look right now, the dark forest is the staking mechanism. So you can go and you can pick up a unicorn and the unicorns rightfully so because they're paying passive income. So you all have to remember, you know, passive income is never free. Passive income is never cheap. You know, everyone seeks after that word. Uh, and this is where you can stake your unicorns on the polygon chain. So there's not a lot of gas for your transactions, for example, uh, but a little over one Ethereum, you can pick up a unicorn and you can stake it every 24 hours in the dark forest and the dark forest it actually nets the unicorn milk token and you can do what you want you can do what you want with the unicorn milk token you can either choose to sell the unicorn milk token or you can choose to breed uh, so what you can actually do is you can hatch an egg that either gives you a loot box or it gives you a shadow corn egg and the shadow corns are some sort of evil unicorn character so I really like the appeal of this game. And I think what a lot of people say, what a lot of people say about this game is this is something their daughter could play. This is something that uh, the age range here, because it's a play to earn game, you know, there, there will be adults that will play it because it's play to earn. Uh, and there will also be kids who could play this because it appeals to so much of a broad spectrum. Uh, in my opinion, like, like I said, like, your daughter could play this game uh, and have fun, right? L legit fun, most likely, and not even have to worry that it's a play to earn game. Like they'll be just making money in the background. Like that is an amazing concept. Uh, and it's games like that that are going to be successful as you see the different types of land plots, uh, the process you can raise and breed awesome unicorns, uh, the slots, the stables, all that good stuff, the jousting, racing, and battle gameplay as well really really bullish on this game and i think that they have a really good appeal as far as graphics go so keep your eyes out on crypto unicorns the unicorns are about one ethereum and the unicorn land is about 0.08 ethereum uh the land is there's no staking mechanism yet for these but i know this is around the corner and this game is really solid if you listen to one of their amas they're asking me anything they are really really strong as far as the team goes so uh just take a look at this project i think this is one of those plays that could be around the corner that could really explode uh, whenever it does start to have a little more development. Uh, and let's take a look at Crypto Raiders. I've talked about Crypto Raiders in the past at the very end of a video, one to keep your eyes on. They also have an active collection on OpenSea if you want to get started in this game. And they're pretty cheap. The Gen 5 just launched. Uh, so the Gen 5s are not too expensive. They're like 0.03 Ethereum. Uh, so that's like the latest generation. Uh, I would recommend a Gen 4, but I understand uh, if you want to just pick up a floor character and see what the game is about. But Crypto Raiders, as they describe it, raid dungeons, earn gear, and level up. An NFT-based dungeon crawler on Polygon. Now, I have a character. I do the weekly raids, and it's super fun, honestly. Uh, right now, most of it's pretty passive. Uh, you just kind of click a button. They can do the raid. And then sometimes you actually get into a battle here, as you see here. You're fighting like a creature in the dungeon. Uh, and it's really fun. And this game has a lot of active players. They have a lot of guilds looking their way, which I think is super bullish. If you want to look for the next thing around the corner, look where the guilds are putting their money. 
And a lot of these guilds like Merit Circle or GuildFi or Good Games Guild, they'll get involved early because these economies are integrating play to earn or they are building a lucrative game down the line. And Crypto Raiders is taking the opposite approach of a lot of games. So right now their earning system isn't fully built out, right? But you can here take a look at their roadmap update. And this is on the 11th. Uh, they're finishing the stages of their infrastructure upgrade. The Dungeon 1 Act 2 launches next week. Endless Dungeons will likely launch the week after. So you do have a dungeon cap at the moment, like for weekly uh, for weekly raids. Uh, so to start, this will be the only place to farm rings. Uh, we will turn on Aurum rewards for mobs holders around this time. And we'll experiment with turning on the Aurum rewards for players as well. So right now, the token economics aren't built into the game yet. They aren't built into the game yet, but you can earn loot and stuff like that. And here's the future interface. They're actually moving the game over to the Unity engine. So they're moving it over to the Unity engine. And I love the looks of it. It's got that pixelated feel. Uh, it kind of feels like an old school, uh, just like it, really nostalgic. Uh, you would be playing this on your Game Boy type of thing uh, when I was a little kid. So I really like the interface here. The team behind it's brilliant. And like I said, the guild attention they're getting. Preparing some awesome stuff coming soon for Crypto Raiders, as you see GuildFi tweeting that out. And they have their army their, their army of Raiders ready to go. Uh, so I love these nostalgic-feeling games. And those pixelated-style games, right? Like this, Metagods, a couple of those pixelated games I really, really like uh, for whenever they do have that full integration. Uh, and Crypto Raiders is one to keep your eye on, in my opinion. And like I said, the way that the characters are set up right now the gen fives are pretty cheap this is definitely in an economy that's not too much of a buy-in but right now like i said the earnings aren't fully built out so you're not going to join crypto raiders and make a fortune this is just an economy like crypto raiders as well or uh, like crypto unicorns as well that's in the future i think one of the games around the corner but the only difference is crypto unicorns you can stake your unicorn and earn tokens at this very moment uh, and then let's get into the last one I want to cover uh, for today, and that is Pizza Game. Now, this is the highest risk of the bunch. I need to put that out full disclosure. Uh, this is the highest risk of the bunch. Uh, but when you have a lot of things working for you and you bring a lot of different profits from these play to earn economies like Pegaxi, for example, uh, you have some stable coins and you have some opportunities to get in on games whenever they do launch. So Pizza Game launched on the 9th, actually, I believe. Uh, let's take a look. And the game is live. Let's put those chefs to work. And it launched February 9th. And Pizza Game really reminds me of like a wolf game. It's an NFT staking gamified play. Uh, and they're actually partnered up right now with Krabata. Uh, so Pizza Game is an avalanche play to earn game inspired by cook, uh, Cookie Clicker. To play, you must have a pizza chef NFT while steak produce pizza every minute. Uh, and as you see here, the cool art with the Krabata guys at the pizza bar i really love that art to be honest uh, but as mentioned the game just went live on the ninth and here's the interface so you stake your pizza chefs you stake your pizza chefs and you earn a certain amount of pizza tokens per minute uh, and they actually have a freezer you can restake your pizza tokens and right now as you earn one pizza for a generic chef every minute the token is five cents. There's 1440, so 1,440 minutes in a day. You divide or you times that by the token price of 0.05. So 1440 times 0.05. You're earning about $72 a day off of these pizza chefs, off of one pizza chef. So these things are lucrative, and this is brand new. So if there's ever a time to make a DGEN play like this, uh, which long term, you know. These are the types that like, you're not staying in these ones long term, right? You're going to try to stay in these while it's hot uh, and while the token and the economy is super healthy. But this right here is definitely printing at the moment. So one chef at the moment can make about $72 per day. That adds up like that. Adds, that's a few thousand dollars over a month. Uh, and if you think that that couldn't like, you know, add to your stack or help out someone, then you're crazy. Because all these passive economies, if you have them working for you, it's actually crazy. Uh, and I know I see someone say, I'm lost. Uh, yeah, I mean, and these economies will definitely, no one understands when we talk about these economies and how we're making money. 
But when we say I have crabs and horses and pizza chefs and DeFi kingdoms and unicorns, they think they literally think, you know, you're you're on drugs of some sort, but we're not. Uh, and these games are legit. Like I said, they're partnered up with Krabata. And all you really do, you just buy a chef. You can get them on NF trade. The floor is about 11 AVAX. The floor is about 11 AVAX right now. They're making about 72 bucks a day. Last time I checked, the uh, return time is about 22 days. Um, so yeah, I'm willing to take that risk. Uh, it's something that I got involved on. So I'll definitely check back on this and keep you updated on this one. But this is definitely the most D-Gen play of all the bunch that I just presented you. Uh, this is definitely the most D-Gen play. But I have gotten involved here because when you're playing with profits from other passive economies, um, you kind of need to try to pivot your money into what's hot. And I know a lot of the peg or not the peg I know a lot of the Krobata community heavily got in to the pizza game uh, because of the partnership first and foremost. Uh, but they're just picking up social steam. You can check their Twitter and stuff like that. Their game is actually, you know, growing in, uh, I would say social sentiment. So yeah, those would be my three that are right around the corner that I would just take a look at if I were you. And that would be crypto unicorns, crypto raiders, which their game is currently live. Uh, the earnings just aren't fully built out. And pizza game, which is the max degen play of the three. Like I said, highest risk, but definitely high reward for where it stands, right? Uh, 22 day payback time is definitely, uh, it's definitely a handsome return. So uh, do your own research on all of these. But I'm just trying to present you all the different plays and the opportunities in the space because Play to earn is growing. And these are types of things that you're not worried if Bitcoin went down 20%. You're not worried if the market's way up. Uh, you know, sometimes when the market's up, actually, it could hurt the play to earn economy. So I guess that could actually sometimes hurt the play to earn scene because people pivot towards tokens. They pivot away from NFTs, stuff like that. But these are the types of economies that in times like the last couple of months, if you get involved, it really takes the ease and the emotions out of the market, right? When you wake up to a red market, sometimes, you know, it can get in your head when you're in crypto uh, at such a deep level. And I think that, you know, these types of economies that pay you in the background are the things that will be the legit bear market hedge. And that's what play to earn gaming is here to solve. There will be so many players over the next few years sweeping to the play to earn scene uh, because there is a legit way to make money here. When the market is up, down, or sideways. Uh, so I absolutely love that. And last thing on the show, a few weeks ago, guys, I talked about Clementine's Nightmare, a, a project which I'm super bullish on. As they describe it, like I said, is a play and earn NFT hero battler. And it really reminds me uh, like the nightmare or the uh, the night before Christmas, Tim Burton, a uh, night before Christmas. It's got those vibes, in my opinion, as you take a look at some of the artwork. Uh, really, really solid project here. And we actually have some whitelist spots to give away uh, once again. So we had a successful giveaway earlier in the week on those apes that we gave away on my Twitter. We're going to be giving away some whitelist on my Twitter once again. So check in the next hour. I will tweet out at HustlepediaYT uh, about some whitelist spots for Clementine's Nightmare. I do think that this project is going to do super well. And they're, they've been working on this project for a couple of years. The game is going to be solid. Uh, with a lot of different elements, right? These characters all have different abilities. Uh, and it's kind of just like, uh, you know, Clementine is kind of cha being chased by her nightmares, so to speak. So really love this project. The art is strong. The team is strong. So follow me on Twitter at HustlepediaYT. I'll be tweeting that here in the next hour. Otherwise, I'm going to get out of here, guys. I'll be back tomorrow as usual. And I have to give you a teaser. I might be appearing, uh, I might be appearing on Miles' DeFi show here in about 11 hours or so so keep your eye out from that i just might be there you, you just might catch a familiar face there otherwise i'll be back tomorrow guys like the video if you enjoyed and if you're bullish on crypto gaming play to earn and all the degen feeling opportunities but that are actually paying <laughs> that are actually paying you know you can't describe this to a real world person only a degenerate would understand some of the things that we are doing here in the play to earn space uh, but thank you for watching. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see y'all tomorrow uh, as usual, 1.30 Eastern time on In the Game. Till then, play well, my friends.
hope my pizza isn't burnt. <laughs>